Facebook ads can still be perfect for getting your name in front of your customers, but how can you be sure you're targeting the people who are most likely to do business with you? So there are a ton of ways you can target audiences with Facebook ads, and in this video, I'm gonna explain each targeting option so you'll be able to choose for yourself what makes the most sense to get to your perfect customers, even if they've never heard of you before. So a little background, I've been running Facebook ads since they were pretty much brand new, and I always like to keep up to date with the latest, greatest targeting options. So let's just get started. Okay, so here we are in the Facebook Ads Manager. You just go to business.facebook.com slash ads manager. And we've skipped a few steps here because all I'm really showing you today is your targeting options. So we're just gonna jump right into that. So what we've got here is to start off with, we can target people based on their location. So we can do whole countries like the United States. We can do, uh, let's just type in a city like Denver. And what we've got here is you can do the actual city of Denver or the DMA region, which would be uh, basically think of it as Denver and the surrounding suburbs. You could do that. You can do the whole state of Colorado. You can do multiple states. Uh, you can do a, a down to a zip code even if you wanted to. So um, it's really easy to get started with this. And this is particularly useful if you are a local business, obviously. And then the next thing we can target is age. So I'm just gonna get rid of that actually, so we're not limited there. Um, so yeah, we can add in age. So depending on who your target market is, and that's why it's really important that you have a good handle on who your customers are. So I generally like to advertise you know, my services to people in their late 20s and above. So uh, 28 to maybe uh, 60 would be my sweet spot. And then obviously you can do gender, you can do all, or men or women. And this comes in handy if you know that your message is much more likely to land uh, in with a male versus a female. You can even think of, even if you have kind of an all-purpose all service or product, you can run different ads to different genders if you think it's going to make a bigger impact. Because um, it always helps to speak very clearly and directly to one customer rather than trying to uh, be everything to everybody, right? So, and then you can put in your language here. So that's all the really basic stuff, right? Now it gets more interesting where we can include uh, additional demographics, interests, or behaviors. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click on browse so we can kind of go through all these different options we've got here. And it's gonna, it's really intensive, so I'm not gonna go through absolutely everything, but it's gonna give you a really good idea of what's possible. So let's just start with demographics. And you've got things like education, um, so education level, um, meaning you know you can get on down to what kind of degree they have, if they've finished high school or not. Uh, fields of study, so you can type in, I don't know, marketing, to see if, uh, well and these are kind of more, um, jobs I think there. So not everything is going to pan out, obviously, but um, schools, you can target people on what school they went to, uh, when they went to college, what years. And now let's uh, move past education to financial. So let's see what we've got here. Uh, we've got income. So this is not exactly what it appears to be. You're not. It's not that you're targeting the top 10% of household income. You used to be able to do that, but thanks to the Cambridge Analytica stuff, uh, no longer is that possible. But what you can do is you can target the top 10% of er high earning zip codes, which is kind of a, it's a, it's a little bit of a um, shortcut. You know, it's not gonna get you, it's not gonna be completely pinpoint accurate because even in the 90210 zip code, there's probably some people that live there that are not, uh, uh, the, the richest of the rich. So it's not a, a silver bullet, but it's a good way to get you halfway there. So you can do top 10%, you know, top uh, 25 to 50, or top 5% if you really wanted to go for the richy riches. All right, so moving along, we've got life events. So things like anniversaries. Um, you, if they've got an anniversary within 30 days or an upcoming uh, beyond, you know, the next two months, uh, people who are away from their family, or away from their hometown. And obviously these aren't all gonna you know, be 
the most the best targeting options for everybody. But if you ha- know something about your audience that would resonate with any of these scenarios, you can absolutely use it. Birthday. So if if it's their birthday month, maybe you're running some kind of a promotion for you know a free uh, free dessert for your birthday month or something like that. Or you can do upcoming birthday if it's coming up within the next 30 days. It can be evergreen that way. Uh, friends of. So we've got close friends of. So if you if you know someone who is having a birthday in the next seven days, so maybe you're running a promotion for a gift service, uh, and you know you can use that kind of copy of hey, we've got a great gift for for the man in your life who's got a birth. You know you probably wouldn't want to say we know he's got a birthday in seven days, but you can run the ad to those people, uh, people who are in long distance relationships. Uh, People have a new job or a new relationship, newly engaged. You know, that's great if you're like a wedding band or wedding DJ, wedding photographer, that kind of thing. Uh, If you're a newlywed. uh, Okay, so now we get to, you know, parents. And then you can drill down to parents of a of less than one year old, uh, parents with adult children, early school age children. So, you know, it's really powerful. All the things you can target here. Uh, Relationship. So people who are civil union, complicated, divorced, you know, you can uh, target all these different things. Work, let's see, so employers, you can basically search for, and I don't don't really know when this would come in handy, but if you wanted to target people who worked for a certain company, um, and they're listed here, you could probably do that. Again, it probably has to be a really big company for that to pan out, because you, ideally speaking, you want to be targeting audiences of a million or more, in general. So unless you're a extremely local business, then you can get away with less. But um, yeah, so and then industries, you can target people in these different industries, which can be powerful if you're a B2B business, for sure. Job titles, that's another good one. So let's say you are a web designer and you're trying to sell your services to the marketing managers of different companies. You can search for that. And if there's enough volume there, you could absolutely run your ad to just those people. So that's all demographic stuff. Let me collapse that. Now we get into interests. So business and industry, you know, people who are interested in any of these things, uh, aviation, maybe you're selling, uh, you know, airplane parts or something like that, or airplane uh, mechanic services. You want to get people interested in that, banking, business. So there's all these different uh industries that if you can target your your core customers based on what they're interested in in terms of industry, that could work out for you. Entertainment. So here's where, uh, you know, it, you can target people based on the shows they watch or the the movies they like. You know, I happen to actually be a huge horror fan. So I get ads all the time for this. It's a streaming service called Shudder, um, which is basically like a Netflix for horror movies. And they know that I like horror movies because of, you know, the things I like on Facebook. So that's just one specific example. But you know, you're going to target people, you know, live events. If they go to the ballet, if they go to bars, if they go to concerts, that kind of stuff. Nightclubs. like, And maybe it's not that your people like your product, your service because they go to nightclubs, but maybe there's just a huge overlap between, you know that your core customers, your ideal customer goes to nightclubs as well. That could be a good way to just make it a little more specific, right? All right, so now we've got, you know, family and relationships. So people who are uh, interested in fatherhood, friendship, marriage, motherhood, all these different things, parenting could be huge if you're selling something uh, that's meant for kids, fitness and wellness. So exercise, running, weight training, yoga, you know, what if you run a a yoga studio? That would be pretty perfect, right? So there's all these different categories, food and drink, hobbies, activities. Let's just see what's in there. You know, arts and music, current events, home and garden. So my mom's a huge gardener and maybe you've got the perfect product or the perfect service for that. You're shopping and fashion, sports, technology, all that good stuff. And then uh, we've got behaviors. So this is where... um, you know, I'm not sure why anniversary would be. And there's a few things that are a little off here. Um, not sure why anniversary would be in behavior, but like consumer classification. So, uh, and this one is kind of a powerful one, but it's not available in every country, unfortunately. So it basically tells people, tells you um, to put your ad only in front of people who are, you know, high, who prefer high and mid-value goods or high-value goods. We do not have that here in the U.S. anymore, so can't even use that. Digital activities. So. You know, if there are 
console gamers or if they've used Facebook payments. Oh, here's a really interesting one, okay? Facebook page admins. I love this one if you are a B2B business. So what that tells you is, so you can target people who are business page admins because guess who those people probably very likely are? They're small business owners, right? And what if you uh, cater to restaurants, food and restaurant page admins, or if you cater to uh, you know hair salons for somehow, you, you're a provider for them, health and beauty page admins. Um, there, it gets really granular here and it can be super powerful if you use it in the right way. And small business owners, you can target that as well. And they, they probably likely take that right from this. Um, people who use a, a specific mobile device, um, maybe you have an app or something and you want to only target people who have a certain bra uh, operating system. And then more categories. What's in there? So interested in upcoming events. You know, I'm not sure how you'd use those, but if you could, go for it. Politics. This is a dangerous one. This is, <laughs> this is why there's a lot of... Uh, kind of controversy surrounding Facebook these days is because you can uh, target people who are um, conservative, liberal, or moderate. You know, use that one wisely. Don't. <laughs> and I bet Facebook comes down really hard and looks very closely at those ads as well. Multicultural affinity. So this one's a little strange and I'm, you know, I'm not sure exactly how they get this information, but you can basically um, target people who Facebook would believe to be African American, Asian American, Hispanic, um, and I guess that would just depend on the things they like and the, their browsing behavior online. So um, you got to be careful though in your messaging. You don't ever want to insinuate anyone's ethnicity in an ad. So just be careful of that. Uh, purchase behavior. So this one's interesting as well. I love this one. Engaged shoppers. So what I would like to do, or I'd like to tell you to do, so. Choose whatever targeting you want, and then also add in engaged shoppers as an extra layer. So that's going to prioritize Facebook showing your ad to people who not only are interested in what your uh, core audience is interested in, but they're also known to um, have clicked on the call to action button shop now in the past week. So in other words, these are people who are much more likely to actually buy something online. And that goes for actually purchasing products as well as clicking through um, to whatever your call to action is, whether it's to schedule a consultation or an appointment, anything like that. And then we've got Ramadan, soccer for some reason. I don't know why soccer is its own uh, special sport here. And then travel. So you can get frequent travelers, frequent international travelers, commuters. Um, there's all kinds of options here. And then here we've got something that um, is called detailed targeting expansion. So it basically, if you check this box, Facebook lets its algorithm goes to work to try to figure out, you know, if we were to show this ad to people who are do not specifically fall in line with what you've uh, indicated, but we think for one reason or another, based on who's clicking your ad um, already, they might show your ad to f a further reach of people who... Um, may be perfect for you, but for some reason or another, they don't fall into the, the neat little buckets that you've specified. So this is something you'd want to test. It's not always going to be a good thing, but it can be sometimes. And next we've got connections. So what we can do is you can target people who like your page, uh, friends of people who like your page, which is great because when they see the ad, they'll see that their friend, it'll name their friend and say they, you know, Margaret Smith likes this page. So it's a good little social proof thing. And you can also exclude people who like your page if you only want to reach new people and you don't want to pay to reach people who you've already got liking your page. And you can also target people who have responded to your event or exclude people who have responded to your event. So maybe you're, you're putting on an event and that's the purpose of your ad to get people to come. You can exclude everybody who's already said yes, right? Because it makes sense. You wouldn't want to keep advertising to people who've already responded and are coming. Now that's about all I can show you inside of Ads Manager, but next up we have remarketing. Now, technically this isn't a way of targeting cold audiences, but Facebook targeting isn't all about people who don't know you. In fact, the best way you can spend your Facebook ad money is to further that relationship between you and people who have already expressed some interest in your business, but who haven't acted on it yet. So there are several ways of remarketing, including people who have visited your website, people who visited specific pages of your website, or have come a certain number of times, or who've spent a certain amount of time 
on your site. So the possibilities are really endless there. And you can also upload your email list if you have one. And that brings me to the gold standard of targeting, my absolute favorite targeting method, and that is to create a lookalike audience based on your email list, preferably uh, an email list of people who have actually spent money with you. So Facebook figures out what the people on your list have in common, and then it goes out and it finds millions more people who look most like those people in terms of their interests and online behavior. Now, I will tell you, you do need to have at least a thousand people on that list for Facebook's algorithm to be accurate enough to be effective. So if you don't have a list of a thousand buyers, you can consider using your more general email list of people who may have opted in for your lead magnet. If you don't have that list or a thousand people on that list, you probably wanna use another targeting method until you do. So another reason why building that email list is so important. Like I said, retargeting people who already know who you are is by far the best way to spend your money on Facebook ads, but some things work much better than others. And I wanna make sure that you do it right. So click right here for five of my very best retargeting plays that you can start using to get people off the fence and into your business sooner rather than later. So click right here and I cannot wait to share those tactics with you.